Before we continue with the electrical rule check, I wanted to just summarize and highlight a few of the important features that we've illustrated here that we're going to use over and over again. We're going to talk real briefly about net names, about ports, and about the power plug. Now with the net names, I showed you how we can identify and create a net name. Use a name that makes sense because we're going to see that net name for the traces when we uh, do the layout of the board. And it would be nice to be able to see the name uh, in the trace itself when we're doing the layout. And so use a logical name that will remind you of what its application is. One thing that I didn't mention that's also important is when we use a net name on a trace to make connectivity to some other trace far away, we're going to make the length of that trace relatively long just so it'll fit the net name. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a dummy schematic. And suppose that um, uh, we, I have a couple components here. Suppose that uh, we were to add a, another component. Let's add this uh, 555 timer. Remember, this is our JLC library. So these are the ones that we're going to have JLC assemble for us. We double click, change the icon. There we go. If I want to uh, add a net name to the discharge line, let's see, I come over here. I right mouse click to make sure I have the net label set up. I've got the net label available. I can connect it to the terminal on um, this uh, pin. And now it's connected in, and I can escape out. And of course, I can go in here. I can highlight it. Um, I can also open up the properties page for that component. Here it is, the net label. See what others I've got, nothing. I could type in a new label here. So this will be a 555 discharge, for example. Press return, it's locked in. That's really hard to see, kind of awkward, right? And so instead of doing that, if I highlight this guy, if I, if I highlight this guy and I move him over, look, he's attached to that net. And um, I can just make the, the, the trace, the wire that he's connected to, I can make that a little bit longer. It just makes it easier to read. And the, I want to use the length for uh, that trace is comparable to the length of the name of the net. Now, while we're talking about the 555, Here's another important question. Remember, in the JLC library, when we select a 555, look, I have two options. I have the fast uh, 555 and a slow 555. If I look down here, I see, uh-oh, the fast one is part of the extended. The slow one, it's part of the basic. And so which one do I want to use? If you don't have a strong, compelling reason, use the one that's basic. But there is a functional difference between these two. And what is it? Well, here's how we can find out. We have to look in the data sheet. Don't be afraid of opening up data sheets. Sometimes you can find the information you need. Sometimes you can't. But you got to look first. So we're going to look at both of these. And there are two parameters that we're going to look at. The difference between the fast and slow is their rise time. So we're going to look for their rise time. But an important consideration when we use this 555, remember the output of the 555 is going to drive current through a bunch of LEDs with current limiting resistors. In the case of the 50 ohm resistor, well, of course, when I go and look for my 50 ohm resistor, I don't have a 50 ohm resistor. The closest I have is 47 ohm. And so instead of using a 50 ohm, we're going to use a 47 ohm. This is part of the trade-offs. But I have two of them. I have an 0402 and I have a 1206. Let's see. The 0402, that's the basic part. The 1206, that's an extended part. Which one are we going to use? Unless you have a strong, compelling reason, use the basic part, the 0402. So we double click, and that's the one that we're going to use here. And that's, in fact, the one that I've selected over here. Well, think about this. OK, I'm going to connect my uh, LED into, uh, uh, into my resistor. And of course, the other end of this is going to be ground going to be like this, and I'm going to have the output of the 555 coming into the LED. So that means I could have maybe about 5 volts across the LED and the 50 ohm. How much current am I going to get? This is a calculation you should do every single time you're designing your circuit in the plan of record. Well, 5 volts, I get it all together. I get about 2 volt drop across the LED. That means I have 3 volt drop across the roughly 50 ohm resistor. If I have 3 volts across this, how much current is that? That's 3 volts divided by roughly 50 ohms. That's 60 milliamps. Just in one of the LEDs, 
I'm going to have 60 milliamps. I better make sure this 555 is capable of sourcing at least 60 milliamps. When you add up all the other currents, maybe it's 70 milliamps that I'm going to need coming from this 555. Is it capable of doing that? Well, let's take a look. So we come over here and let's take a look at the fast. This is going to be a shorter rise time. How much current can it sink? Now it's more expensive. It's the extended one. Let's see what its specs are. So we can do that a couple different ways. We can come over here and click on a link if there's, this is where the spec sheet is going to be on the DigiKey site. Or here is the actual part number in the LCSC library. Let's use that because that's going to be a little bit higher confidence I've got the correct part. So I highlight this, I right mouse click, I copied those technical terms, and now I'm going to open up a browser. We're going to go to the LCSC catalog, and we're going to look for that part and pull up its data sheet. I'm going to open up a new browser window, and I'm going to paste that um, information in there. Now the only thing that I care about is the LCSC and the C number. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of this stuff. And I'm going to say, OK, go find me the information about this part. And sure enough, look, here it is, lcsc.com. I click to open up that page. And here it is. So I'm in the LCSC library. This is the specific part that I'm using. And here's the footprint for it. And here's the data sheet. Let's open up that data sheet. Remember, this is the fast part. So let's see. It's the fastest, a stable frequency, 3 megahertz. That's great. We want to know, can it sync and source 60, 70 milliamps? So we look down here. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Tested at 50 milliamp output currents. Uh-oh. I'm not sure. So let's see if we can find any information about the source and sync current. We know it can source at least 50 milliamps, but can it source 60 or 70 milliamps? Well, let's see. I have absolute maximum ratings. That's not really helping me much. This is 100 milliamps from the power supply, but I don't know how much is internal. I don't know if it can output 70 milliamps. Let's see. Can we get that information? And here is the list of technical specs. I don't know about you, but I don't see anywhere here what is the source and sync current. I do see a really important term, output, rise, and fall time. And look. 15 nanoseconds, wow, that's really cool, I like that. But I don't see anything about source and sync current, except for the one comment that it's been tested to 50 milliamps. So I don't have high confidence that I'm going to be able to use this part to drive my 70 milliamps of current through my LEDs. This is, if the goal of using this part is to be able to turn on those LEDs to their full current, this is a questionable part. If that is the most important parameter for this part. So that, that says, uh, don't use this part unless you've qualified it. And I don't have confidence in it. Let's check the other one. Here's the slow part. So again, same thing. Here's the LCSC part. I click, I highlight, I copy that. I open up a browser window. And we're just going to paste that in. I'm going to get rid of the superfluous stuff. And we're going to do a search. And here it is. It's also a TI part. It's in the LCSC library. It is a different C number or component number, distinctly different. Here's the data sheet for this part. I open it up. Different data sheet. Oh, look at this. Compatible can sync or source up to 200 milliamps. Wow, I like seeing that for this application. And so we can read down. Da -da 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 -da. Nice description. This is telling us about what's going on, on the inside. You notice here's pin 5. Look, it's going to just a resistor voltage divider. This is a constant voltage source. We talked about this earlier. Optional whether I put a capacitor to filter this, any noise on here or not. Uh, we can leave it floating. Absolutely do not short pin 5. If you short pin 5, you've completely destroyed the functioning of this part. So either leave it open or add a a capacitor on there, a filter capacitor, 22 microfarad is perfectly fine to use. And we're looking for sync or source current. Let's see. So we scroll through, we scroll through, 
We're looking for sink or source current. We scroll. Look at, there's a lot more information in here than uh, before. Uh, let's see. Well, we have the rise and fall time. Here is output, rise, and fall time. Well, gee, typical is 100 nanoseconds, maybe up to 300 nanoseconds. Remember what it was for the fast part? It was 15 nanoseconds. If we don't care about the rise time, then it doesn't matter which one we use. If we have an application where that rise time is important, we want to operate at a higher frequency, then hmm, we might want to use the fast part, even though it's an extended part and is going to cost more, it may be worth it. But for this application, where output current is important, this is the part that we want to use. And well, we get a benefit. It's also the lower cost part because this one can output up to 225 milliamps um, source or sink current. So this is the right one to use, the slow one. So when we select the 555 to use, we want to, let's see, which one did I pick here? This is the fast one. You see when I, I hover over this part, I click once to identify, look, this is the fast part. Oops, don't want to use that because that's not going to be able to sink and source enough current for us. I want the slow one. Double click, bring it in. Here it is. Escape out. This is the one that we're going to want to use, and we're going to hook it up. I mentioned using ports, and we did that for um, power, and ground is also a port. What we didn't mention, and we'll talk about in um, the section where we talk about board two, is the use of ports. The difference between a port name and a net name is that a port goes off the sheet. That's how we're going to connect different nets on different sheets with a port. And a couple special ports are power and ground. Now, when you use power, there's a convention to use that most people in the industry use and um, is, is a good habit, and that's for a power, net, a, a power port name. Add a plus at the beginning if it's a plus supply or minus if it's a minus supply the value of the voltage, and then some descriptor for it. Now, when I did the schematic in the previous video, I just left it as plus 5 volts. I probably should have labeled it as plus 5 volts in, just to distinguish, because there are other places to put it. And when I describe the voltage on the 555, there are really two ways, depending on your inclination. I could describe that, that voltage, because it was localized, and that net was used only for the 555, I could associate it with the 555 timer, and that's why I labeled it as 555 5 volt. Or I could have said, hey, that's a power rail. I should label it as plus 5V underscore 555. Either one in this application, perfectly suitable. And one last thing is adding the ground symbol. When I add a ground symbol to a component, by convention, again, so here are the power ports, right mouse click, and here are the different options that I've got. I'm going to use ground over here. By convention, it's preferable to add the uh, ground port pointing down instead of, for example, if I, uh, if I wanted to add um, uh, to the, uh, the reset pin ground, which I never want to do, what I would do, is I could have rotated it around and put it in uh, like this. And that would have been, of course, I want to pull it away so I see a little bit of the trace. Likewise here, I want to pull it away so I see a little bit of the trace. Could have done that. It would have fit. But by convention, we generally like to um, have the ground pointing down. It just makes it easier to identify and easier to see. So we highlight it, and we rotate it. And of course, I don't need the, this uh, net that I created before. And so now we come along and we place it in there, and now it's connected in. And there we go. So, um, uh, and I think I may have goofed once or twice and put the ground in, rotated an angle to make it fit a little better. Generally, if you make it pointing down, you look at your schematic, every ground will be pointing down. It looks a little neater, looks a little obvi more obvious where the ground is located. And again, be sure when you do add a ground, uh, don't just add it to the terminal because then you can't always tell, you know, did I make a connection? You can always check, you know, move the component and the net should change with it. Or even better, add a little extension. Remember, I have a 100 mil grid 
I have a 100 mil grid in uh, the schematic. And so every click, every time I move this, I move it 100 mils. And so put at least 100 mil length of trace on uh, every um, connection to every component that just gives you confidence that yeah you have a good connection there and then finally there's one last thing you're gonna see the impact of this a little later I hope you noticed when we were uh, uh, placing components on the schematic and do the wiring that I made a little boo-boo I screwed up I'll show you how I screwed up here's our schematic page now I'm gonna grab the power plug now remember, in our libraries, the power plug is a through-hole component. You're not going to find it in the GLC library. You have to go to the manual library, and we're going to look for power. Let's see, P, P, power, power jack. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to bring it onto the board, and there it is. This is the guy that we're going to plug our external AC to DC power into. And here's the uh, pin one is where the good stuff is. That's where the power is going to come out. So I could come along here, right mouse click, select wire, come along here, make the wire. And this guy here, again, you know, since it's easy and kind of fun to do, let's add a net label to it. This net label is going to be, uh, let's see, this is going to be plus, let me highlight it. This will be plus 5 volt in, for example. And again, I highlight it. I come over here to properties. Now I can see information about it. Well, do I have any other net names? Oh yeah, well there's ground as an official net name. So here's my, my power net, and I can use that anywhere I want. But you notice I didn't finish, because look, I have to connect ground. This is going to be the outer shell of the connector that's attached to the, the cable of the power supply. I didn't, tell, I didn't tell anybody that this is going to be ground. I need to connect these two together to ground. So I come over here. I need to use my wire connector. I connect these two together because they're both going to be connected to ground. I'm going to make a little trace over here. And now I escape out. And now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to connect ground to that. I'm going to connect ground to that. And now it's official. Now I have the power jack connected correctly. And now I have the power jack connected correctly. I've got the power coming out. It's labeled well. I connect everything else I want to to it. And I have the other pins in the power jack connected to ground. Really important. And we'll see the impact of that uh, a little later when we do the electrical rule check. This is a very common mistake. Look, I fell for it. Don't you guys fall for it. Learn from my mistakes. And make sure whenever you use a power jack that pins 2 and 3 are connected together and connected to ground. And that way they'll automatically get connected to the right net in the layout.